two years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail her. Yeah, we're exactly. supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Hello and welcome to The Talk. I'm Daisy Kanji. Tonight on The Break, Britain and America warn Israel against a catastrophic escalation in the Middle East over fears of an uncontrollable war. Plus, leaked documents reveal Sunak's plan to replicate the Rwanda scheme around the world from Costa Rica to Botswana. And Prince Harry breathes a sigh of relief as the US ambassador in London insists the Duke won't be deported back home under President Biden. Joining me on the panel tonight are Kevin O'Sullivan and Ian Collins, JJ Anasiewi and Emma Wolfe. But first to that escalating situation in the Middle East, the Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron has urged Israel to think with head as well as heart and not to retaliate to Iran's missile attack. Tehran launched 300 drones and missiles in an assault that set off air raid sirens across Israel on Saturday night. Tel Aviv reopened its airspace on Sunday morning following the attack, having intercepted 99% of the projectiles. Cameron confirmed that British fighter jets helped shoot down the drones in what he branded an almost total failure for Iran. He also suggested the UK would help again if Tehran launched another attack on Israel. Well, this afternoon, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak reinforced the message that the G7 nations want to avoid any escalation in the Middle East. Mr Speaker, with this attack, Iran has once again shown its true colours. They are intent on sowing chaos in their own backyard, on further destabilising the Middle East. Our aim is to support stability and security, because it is right for the region and because, although the Middle East is thousands of miles away, it has a direct effect on our security and prosperity at home. So we are working urgently with our allies to de-escalate the situation and prevent further bloodshed. We want to see calmer heads prevail. And we are directing all our diplomatic efforts to that end. I mean, obviously, this news over the weekend was very big news. It was uh, alarming, to say the least, that the number of projectiles. It was a relief that such a small percentage got through and there were, there were no deaths. Um, the fact that... Iran had war, that Israel had quite a lot of warning. Um, obviously, it explains how they were able to mount such a strong defence, particularly with uh, you know, help from the Americans and from us and other European nations. I think in some ways, Iran might have miscalculated uh, their attack because what they have managed to do is to get the Allies fully behind Israel again. And the Allies were wobbling behind Israel because of what was happening in Gaza. And I do wonder whether um, that was a miscalculation on Iran's behalf. But it, it, there's a long way to go on this. I disagree. I think um, Iran knew that they wouldn't be, it wouldn't be successful by our terms. Iran is saying they're, they're, they, they were successful. They didn't, they didn't get Hezbollah to attack at the, at the same time. Hezbollah didn't, didn't attack. None of the other proxies attacked. Iran had to do this to save face amongst their own people. Uh, Israel attacked their consulates. They broke international law. Iran waited, what, 10 days, 12 days before they attacked. And we, we know there's the Iron Dome. They know that they are inferior when it comes to military compared to Israel, but they had to do it to save face. And I, I don't think they did underestimate it. I think they did it so they can say to their people, look, we stood up to them. And I don't know whether thing. Israel did break international law. I mean, that's still to be decided, well, isn't it? But, blowing up a consulate, that, that, is, that is against international law. But if you are responding, if you are responding, of course, they haven't taken responsibility in that respect, and, you know, whether it's a consulate, whatever it happened to be, there's all, all manner of controversy. On this sp specific thing that happened at the weekend, I thought the point that Biden made, I wouldn't very often agree with Joe Biden, because he's barely with us, it seems, this <laughs> poor chap, but uh, he said, take the win to, uh, to Israel. And I can kind of see that thinking. What win? Well, the win being that if they don't respond, then they'll be seen as retaining at least 
uh, clawing back some moral high ground, which yeah. they appear to have lost. Yeah. So if they do nothing on this, then maybe it's an opportunity. Yeah, but Netanyahu is not going to take the win. Well, gonna, I doubt we'll He's going to 100% retaliate. Imagine if it was here. I mean, the way people go around, like, bossing Israel around. This is what Israel have got to do now. Netanyahu's got to do this. There's no other nation on earth where every other nation decides that they can b boss it around. And that's what we do to Israel at the moment. So don't retaliate. Don't retaliate. Cameron, no, no, there'll be a terrible escalation if you retaliate. Imagine if it was here. Here we are in London. Suddenly 320 missiles hit us over the weekend uh, from another power, a foreign power. Uh, do you think all the people of Britain will go, yeah, that's fine, as long as we don't retaliate? But the they same, wouldn't. They but, wouldn't. But, but the same people who are telling Israel to not retaliate were staying to Iran first, do not retaliate to Israel attacking the consulate. Yeah. So it goes, goes both ways and I go back to um yeah uh, but 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 you, you it's still other countries telling other countries how to behave but, but, but I think USA can do that because you, you you might have heard Chuck Schumer the leader of the of the Senate saying the amount of money the US gives to Israel if if the US takes that money out then Israel can do it do they, they won't please. do that though but then Israel has to understand that the USA Israel, as their biggest backer is America are gonna have a say in what they're doing Israel will retaliate and America won't do anything about it, it, it you know They've kind of let it be known. Well, if you must retaliate, try to make it a bit constrained. And that's the problem. Uh, over there, trying to constrain this escalating conflict is. is proving increasingly impossible. It is. Just like Ian saying he doesn't often agree with Biden. I don't often agree with Rishi Sunak, if ever. But I think this afternoon him saying just to Israel, cool it, you know, show, show some restraint. Because it's such a frightening situation. And we're on the verge of this spreading you know, in a really, really uncontrollable way. And Netanyahu is not known for keeping a cool head. Sure. So but I of think course, it's quite it's not just Iran, is it? Because Hezbollah have the capability yeah. who are much closer. Yeah. I mean, Iran is, what, 600 and odd miles away from, from Israel. But yeah. Hezbollah could have rockets going off like bilio. Yeah. And in fact, the, let's remember as well, Israel is a country, just to endorse, you know, Kev's point, that it endures rocket attacks on a weekly basis. It hardly ever gets reported. Mm -hmm. uh, they very rarely do anything about it. Once yeah. in a while, something really bad happens, October 7th being yeah. the obvious one. But they're not, they're used to it. But, and when they say rockets, these aren't little fireworks that come course. in a box. These are devastating rockets. But, that but again, with Iran, they didn't um, use Hezbollah to do the attacks, which they could have done. Iran didn't throw its fire those missiles. It's all the same thing, though, isn't it? It is, it is but, but they didn't use Hezbollah. They did it from their own territory. Yeah, that's why it was even more the audacious. Thing. But, but they also didn't um, go to attack um, uh, areas where people are living. They attacked military infrastructure. Yeah, that's true. That's a huge difference. And by the way, though, you say there were no yeah. fatalities. I think a seven-year-old girl was... She's um, not dead. Yeah, she's been injured. Fatally, but... yeah, well, sorry, badly, yeah. very badly wounded. So we shouldn't... You know, oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, there, there, there were inju injuries, no, yeah. no fatalities. All I meant, actually, at the beginning, JJ, wasn't that I thought uh, Iran had somehow messed this up. What I meant by saying that I thought it might be backfiring in the bigger picture is that actually Iran have managed to bring the Western allies to you know, back into the fold with Israel. That, that, I'm that, telling you, that, those, those connections also, were... also some of the Arab states, Saudi Arabia. Yes. Oh, yeah, the more modern Very Arab interesting. Defense, they were all... Israel. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he's galvanised even the Arab states uh, uh, against Iran. So uh, the, Iran yes. may have... Uh, misfired here, but uh, in terms of uh, Israel, it's all very well to say, oh, we approve of what Joe Biden and what uh, Rishi Sunak said, but uh, Netanyahu won't pay any attention. Yeah. And I don't blame him. I, I wouldn't... If I, if I was running a country and 320 missiles rained down on my people over the weekend, somebody from America or Britain saying, don't you dare retaliate, they can do one. Well, I mean, it's, you know, people were making the connection with the Falklands today and say, you know, if anyone had said to us, you can or you can't you know, defend the Falklands, we would have told them where to stick it at the time. Um, then um, we've had uh, some others getting themselves into um, some hot water closer to home uh, today. The BBC's been accused of shocking bias after one of its uh, top presenters said that Israel had murdered tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians. Obviously, the difference being, instead of saying... Tens of thousands of Palestinians had been killed as part of the warfare. Um, they used the word murder. This was during an interview with Lord Cameron, Foreign Secretary, obviously. Uh, presenter Nick Robinson said he wanted to end the discussion with a question of morality. Uh, let's have a listen. Isn't the real risk of where we are now that Western governments appear to back Israel the moment that Israel is under attack? But when Israel attacks and murders tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians, 
we say the words, but we do almost nothing. I, I don't think that's right at all. In fact, I think actually over this weekend and into this week, people can see that the truly malign actor in the region is Iran. Uh, so senior um, Tory Theresa Villiers has urged the Beeb to launch an investigation. Uh, Nick Robinson did tweet after um, the show saying, I should have been clearer I wasn't expressing my own view, let alone that of the BBC, when I used the words murders. Uh, hanging mm -hmm. offence? <laughs> it's quite funny that Robinson has spent his entire career uh, trying to convince people he's not a right-wing Tory stooge, yeah. even though he was, I think he was president of the Tories at university or something. Hanging like offence, good idea. But he's been, he's been in that place. <laughs> yeah. uh, and now, of course, he's accused of, you know, being the ultimate right-winger. I'm sure it was... I'd like to think it was an error, Kev, but... Well, I know, it's just a BBC bias, isn't it, obviously. I mean, you know, that but thing... It wasn't, it wasn't that thing say, with, it with Nick Robinson, oh, he used to be a Tory councillor, that was 14 centuries ago. <laughs> uh, he's been through the uh, BBC processing system now and is very... Very much uh, out the on the left-wing side of the fence. And uh, this is just letting the mask slip, you know, you're talking in terms of murders. So you, yeah. You know, a, 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 an unbiased interviewer should not be calling the death scene. It's not on your radar murders. to use the word. I murders is yeah. wrong. But then both uh, supporters of Israel have called him biased, but previously... Um, supporters of yeah, but, Palestine have but called... But to use the word murders is I know, biased. I get that, but let me finish. But people who, who, who are in support of Palestine have called the BBC biased against Palestinians. So the BBC get it from both yeah, sides. I don't, in I don't terms think... of this incident, he called he called the killing of people in Gaza murders. That's biased. We, well, well, it's biased. Well, it's well, it's at, at, the very, at the very least, we have seen footage of IDF soldiers shooting dead people it's not who the are point. walking it's past not the point. With, with waving we're flags. That, that, that is murder. We're discussing that, that whether not... or not Nick Robinson is biased, and that's biased. I don't think it is well, biased. Of course it is. What? Using the term murders for the deaths. <laughs> Yeah, I don't that's think it's biased. biased. No, I don't think it's They're biased. They're not murders. They are deaths in war. You can't, I, you I, can't journalistically stand it up. That is so. biased. Yeah, but but I'm, as I'm saying to you, we have seen footage of IDF soldiers shooting dead people point. who are who uh, without weapons. But he is editorialising the story. He's editorialising the story. Yeah, he's editorialising the story. Yes, so as, 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 as he's explained it himself in his own words, uh, he should have explained it better. So I don't think it is biased. We shouldn't have used the word murder. We shouldn't have used the word murders. That's bias. That's prejudice. Daisy, you can, you can move us on. Yeah. No, Emma's moving. Yes. Emma, I'm just, I'm just enjoying the show. I don't think False to Emma. To. We'll agree to disagree. Um, closer to home, Iran has been blamed for stoking Islamist protests outside schools and on the streets of the UK. A new report from the Policy Exchange has warned that British intelligence services about... Uh, sorry, has warned British intelligence services about a series of demonstrations condemning instances of blasphemy. The think tank linked these protests, such as the ones outside Batley Grammar School in 2021 and the demonstrations over the Lady of Heaven film in 2022, to the growing influence of the Iranian regime on British Muslims. The Policy Exchange has called on MI5 to reinstate counter-subversion operations to tackle the growing th threat from Tehran, accusing the intelligence service of abandoning its core task at a time when Iran is trying to influence political, religious, educational and cultural organisations to its own ends. Well, with the focus on Iran at the moment, it's clear actually that the state's influence in this country goes much deeper than many people had realised. Um, we've granted 100 visas to Iranian, you know, religious figures and some clerics, I think about 20 clerics have been granted visas in this country. We've got these radical Islamist cleric clerics at this nerve centre in West London. Um, and then we've got Batley, we've got the grammar school protests, we've got, sorry, other, other school protests, and we've got these, um, the, the Our Lady of Heaven, the film protests um, and policy exchange. It's an interesting report. They're now calling for MI5 and for the Home Office to to crack down on... Why, um, why is this... I, I don't know why this has taken... So Iranian long. subversion. Uh, I mean, as one uh, Muslim commentator said to us not that long ago, in fact, I've heard it repeatedly, you know, if some people knew what went on in mosques, they would be absolutely terrified. It doesn't get talked about. Talk TV uh, showed some footage... Uh, about sort of eight months ago, yeah. Yeah. Guess, wasn't it, where we looked at some things that have been said. Um, and ju just more recent, I mean, the Batley Grammar School thing was horrendous. But in plain you know, people, sight, Imams in just plain standing up. Standing outside mosque, schools, calling for this, this guy stuff, to go to jail, week calling this guy week. to lose his job. All of those people should have just been scooped up in a big net and thrown in the slammer, end of. And the one that really <clears> got me was the kid in the playground who apparently scuffed a Koran. And the nearest thing I've ever seen to what looked like a Sharia court, we were faced with the obscene setup of 
whether it was a village hall, wherever it was, it might have yeah. even been in a mosque, yeah. where you had a police chief, an imam, a local councillor, a top cop, and the boy's mother giving a press conference, talking about how sorry they were as what had happened. The imam is saying, we won't let this go. And the copper is nodding his head, sage-like, as this is all being said. The mother is appealing for, you know, please forgive my child. Man alive, how did we get here? This is extreme. In so Britain. I think that some of these, the, the, num the numbers I'm not, I'm not bothered about, 100 visas issued in 20 years is nothing in the grand scheme of things. But there's a much more serious problem with we have in this country with being able to address um, radical Islamists. And as you say, if you've got a cleric, whether it's in behind closed doors in a mosque, whether it's outside of school, if you are spewing hate, whatever religion you are, mm. you should be arrested. It, you cannot be protected because you are Muslim. You can't be protected because. But it's you not are because the fact that you hold a status within that religion makes you even Almost more untouchable. Because yeah, firstly, you're seen as untouchable, and I think authorities, and we know this through grooming gangs, authorities who've gone, well, we better not say anything yeah. because we might get accused of racism. Well, kids are getting raped and you're worried about getting accused of racism. Yeah. I mean, this was very real on an industrial scale. Mm. So, you know, a, te a teacher at a school has got no chance, you know, of, of any kind of justice on this. And now the poor bloke lives in home. Look at that Batley Grammar demonstration. When was it? Three years ago, four years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it said community leaders, the Muslim community have come out to protest. All the locals are going, never seen any of these people before in my life. <laughs> uh, in other words, they were all shipped in. So Iran does do this. Russia does this. China does this. They uh, destabilise. They work to destabilise the West, particularly Britain. That's what's going on, and uh, the authorities need to crack down. Yeah, yeah and, and obviously it is worth bearing in mind, it's not just about hostile states, whoever they are, trying to mess around with our society. And stuff. You know, this is much more serious in the case of Iran. They are pulling the strings of pretty much all the major terrorist organisations in, in the Middle East. And they have, they have managed to form a coalition of terrorist organisations, which hasn't really been seen before. Normally, you've, you've had, you know, Al-Qaeda over here and ISIS over here, and, you know, all these organisations not really being organised. And the terrifying thing about what Iran is doing is locally in the Middle East, it's organising these terror organisations so that it, they, they are going from one end of the Middle East to the other. And then they're trying to influence societies, you know, in, in the West to, to get some homegrown terrorism. So it's it's terrifying that they're pulling the strings from these two different angles. Well, it gets even more terrifying when you realise that it's Russia and China are pulling Iran's strings. Mm -hmm. Russia and China yeah. are backing Iran yeah. uh, for Iran to do all its mischief in the Middle East and here. It's happening all over the world. This is a problem and like so many other areas, the authorities ought to crack down, but they won't. We'll just be a, an increasingly soft touch, which is what Britain is these days. We'll move on now from happy Kevin. Uh, <laughs> coming up, furious residents in Teesside, Hull and Bradford blast a government scheme to buy up homes for asylum seekers, warning it could create mini ghettos. It's another Home Office headache after the break. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to abandon and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Isn't that? Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Ooh, <we're missing. laughs> 
There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know what's I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 did fail her. We're we're supposed to, it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. And welcome back to The Talk. Now, leaked documents have revealed Britain in, is locked in talks to replicate its controversial Rwanda deportation scheme with other countries, including Armenia, the Ivory Coast, Botswana and Costa Rica. Several South American nations, including Peru, Brazil and Colombia, were also approached but are believed to be unlikely to agree to a third country asylum processing deal. There's even a subs bench with Tanzania, Senegal and Sierra Leone being put on a reserve list for if or when other targets fall through. The leak comes as the original Rwanda scheme could finally be set to take off, with the health secretary claiming the first deportation flights will take off within weeks from the bill passing through Parliament. Victoria Atkins refused to say whether an airline had agreed to transport the asylum seekers, but insisted the Home Office is ready to go on the £5 billion pound <laughs> project. I mean, it gives you a sense, a little flavour there of, well, Rwanda might fall through. So what we're going to do, we're going to ask every other country <laughs> on the planet. Could you do if, like, you know, if the situation, we got five million, you know, the Rwandans, they couldn't make it work, but they still got five mil out of it. What have you, Tanzania, Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, what are you, they're throwing this, uh, what is it, a flipping auction, for goodness sake? <laughs> I mean, this is horrific. It just shows the ineptitude of this government. They cannot get it right. And the worst part about this, big celebrations, or oh, royal assent will be given this week. Finally, it's going to happen. A few little amendments put in there. Life's going to be great. Then the planes can take off, except they can't. They haven't got what an planes? airline. What they haven't planes? got an airline to do it. And even if they did, and we've said this countless times here on the talk, the worst situation for Rishi Sunak, the optics, the worst situation is if 35, 36 people end up on a flight. That is far worse than flights not taking off at all, or at least he could claim he's been scuppered by the usual mischief mm. makers, rather than standing up going, it's happening, goodbye, and 35 people going, goodbye, Rishi, goodbye. <laughs> um, I don't know why they would speak like that. But, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? It's, it's, the whole us. thing is embarrassing, you know. Well, Unless the only scintilla of hope for Rishi Sunak is between now and the general election, he needs 10,000 people to be sent to Rwanda. Well, if he doesn't hit that, then the whole thing's lost. Before we had agreed with Rwanda, the Home Office joined a list of a, over 100 countries, they all said no, all yeah. 100. Some of those countries that we're now apparently in talks with had said no originally. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not quite sure why suddenly now these people... Well, they've seen the money. Yes, we're, we're willing to do it. I, I've, over the weekend, I've changed my mind on the Rwanda flights. I think it can work and can be a deterrent, but it, it's no good for sending people who've been here for three, four years, it's got to be tomorrow. First people. Yeah, correct. tomorrow, that's it. We've got 50 people turning up tomorrow. But they're the working pitch. on the cab right. bank rule, we take them they? all and, we, and those... They're not going to do that for some strange No, reason. and I don't know why they wouldn't do that. I don't it seems know. like a, an easy thing well, to so do. So they land in the small boats and they get... And they just straight away, away you yeah. yeah. Then it might be a deterrent. 
As for Costa Rica, I've heard it's a wonderful place oh, to live. I've country. heard that it's glorious. I want yeah. to be de I want to be deported to Costa isn't, Rica. Isn't <laughs> Death in Paradise film there or somewhere so nice like that? <laughs> the UK right now. Yeah, Jake Paul, yeah, the famous YouTuber. Yeah. Him, and his, him and his brother live in Costa Rica. Apparently, it's a wonderful place. Yeah. If, you've, if you've got, if you're, if you're provided with housing, it's pretty much a lovely place to be. Woody Harrelson lives there as well. It's Who? Woody, Woody Harrelson. Harrelson. It's supposed to be a like tropical paradise. Tropical yeah. paradise, I mean, the, the good education, is, good health care, everything. But, uh, you know, it's, Sunak is deranged about this now. I mean, mm. you know, the, what's the potential top yeah. numbers that can go to Rwanda? About 200 or something? Yeah. You know, what? how many people came across the channel yesterday with the spectre of the Rwanda scheme, which the Tories have already told us is putting people off? Mm. Well, yesterday, 534 came across the channel. That is the biggest number so far mm. this year. So it is not a deterrent. So it doesn't matter how many of these countries he lines up. And by the way... This is all really long shot stuff, isn't it? It's unlikely he'll get anything in place before he gets voted out. So this uh, Rwanda scheme is not deterring anything, anyone, nor will the Co Costa Rican scheme or the Botswana scheme. Uh, Sunak, as I say, has become deranged about it. He thinks he has to say something and he's just hanging on by his fingernails to a plan that is already useless. Yeah, well, let's talk about something else that's going to make him really popular. We're sticking with migrants. Locals in Teesside, Hull and Bradford have slammed a government scheme to buy up private rented homes for asylum seekers, warning it could create mini ghettos. Residents fear that the 16,000 rental properties secured by the Home Office for Migrants will hinder integration and add to the British housing crisis. Locals are warning of rising tension between residents and asylum seekers, blast the current housing situation as pretty dire. Other critics are worried an influx of new residents will put too much pressure on local services, including doctors and dentists, which are already overstretched. Housing asylum seekers in dispersed accommodation can reportedly cost as little as £30 every day. That's a fifth less, that's a fifth of the £150 to put them up in hotels. I mean, yet again, this has all been one of the you know, the ramifications of having so many people that don't get their asylums, you know, um, processed. Is that we then have legally to house them, and then you have all the problems, as you know, we've been over these arguments many times. That local residents will say, "This is not fair." You know, I can't get a mortgage or a council house or. Um, uh, affordable housing for love or money, and yet we're giving uh, these houses to asylum seekers. I haven't had a chance today, and I wanted to look at these particular constituencies. I'm imagining that most of them are probably Labour constituencies, because I can't oh, imagine that the Tories would be so stupid this near to a general was election. Number? Was it 16,000? Yeah, 16,000. I mean, you would have to... I mean, this is a... It's, it's sort of a malaise, a, a madness that has set in to our thinking here, there must, even if you were Mad Mike the Marxist, you know, the more left than an Albanian keep left sign, <laughs> Looney Lil the lefty lunatic, you know, whoever you have, even a lefty could look at this and go, this is bloody ridiculous. This is ridiculous. <laughs> See, this is just one area. We're going to take up 16,000 homes to put people that we know nothing about, the backstory, you can have every sympathy, most intelligent people, despite what some people say, no matter where you are, sympathise with anybody escaping a tyrannical regime. We all get that. Our track record is good on that. But this is lunacy. Something has gone horribly wrong. I'm not the government, but if I was the government, I'd be going, can you fire those planes up, please? A yeah. bit lively. There's yeah. no... I mean, the thing coming... You know, the, 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 the whole point of, you know, people, 500 people coming yesterday on the... I mean, you could process those people, as you said, JJ, in one day. In yeah. one day, you could process 500 people quite easily, put enough Border Force people down there and have the planes ready at the other end. And if within that there are people who genuinely need our help, fine. I'd put my name to that every day of the week. But I fear those numbers are not as big as the people that don't need my help. It's only, th it's, 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 uh, only really as insane, isn't it, putting people in rental properties as it is putting them in hotels. The thing is, is to get rid of them. But you I introduce mean, what, people to a community then, and then the, you get community it? cohesion, which is seen by, you know, by some people on the left as a bit of an agitating argument. It's crucial.
Well, I mean, it's, it's just to save money, isn't it? They're, of course it is. That's Richie all it thinks is. we're all going, lying awake at night going, seven, eight million pounds every night for migrants. I can't get to sleep. Well, <laughs> we're used to it. We don't really care anymore. Uh, we're annoyed, but we're stuck with that yeah. situation. And if Rishi Sunak thinks turning around and saying, hey, I found a new place to put the migrants. Isn't that great? They won't be in hotels. They'll be in rented property. Makes no difference. So all he's doing is reshuffling, well, I... the, rearranging the deck chairs on the deck of the and I think it is Titanic, valid when you know. residents, when local residents have real concerns about this, about a large number of people, of asylum seekers, being introduced into their local communities. It's not, that's not racist or xenophobic. I've got a friend on the Isle of Sheppey. They're clo they're, there are plans to close down a retirement home, a lovely, a beautiful retirement home that a lot of old people live in and enjoy in order to make it into an asylum centre. And that is, you know, for the local community, how does that feel? So then, where, but then the, the question is, where do they go? Because we put asylum seekers in hotels, and we have people going with pitchforks and torches, shouting abuse, trying to get them, trying to trying to attack the people. Yeah. Asylum seekers you don't in hotels. So, 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 yeah, yeah, but we're going to have to British do something. People. They've got to go somewhere. Yeah. That's a problem. We put them in a hotel. People are saying, even though I don't use that hotel, I don't want them in there because I might have a wedding there next year. So then we put them in housing, and it saves money. People are still kicking off about that. We put them on the barge. People are saying, we have to stop them before they come. Well, yeah, there you go. So but for the ones who are here, yeah. houses, yeah. though, can't they? Well, yeah, it doesn't make any difference where you put them, I don't think. Coming up, Kemi Badenoch launches a furious broadside at the police, NHS and universities, accusing them of cowardice over gender ideology. A fair criticism or more political manoeuvring? We're debating that next on The Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't <laughs> too keen on that. I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> <laughs> Yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family, and if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're did fail her. Yeah, we're absolutely. supposed to have was moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to 
talk. Pressure on the US government to release Prince Harry's visa records has intensified after campaigners lashed out at an extraordinary intervention from the American ambassador in London. Jane Hartley infuriated the Conservative Heritage Foundation by insisting the Duke of Sussex would never be deported from the United States while Joe Biden is president. The think tank is locked in a court battle with the Department of Homeland Security over access to the royal's immigration papers, but the State Department has so far blocked the request, citing privacy concerns. The foundation claims the multiple admissions of drug use in Harry's explosive biography Spare, which include marijuana, cocaine and psychedelic mushrooms, should have prevented him from obtaining a visa to the US. The row has become a political football, with Donald Trump refusing to rule out deporting him if he's elected president in November. I don't care if Harry's in the US or not, but I do care about is the double standard. He it says in his book he took loads of drugs, cool, groovy, so then he shouldn't have been allowed in the US. <laughs> yeah. If he's on his form, he said, no, I didn't take any drugs, then that should mean he's kicked out. Serious if that was, defense. If that was someone from, from South America coming across and saying, I've never taken any drugs, and then you find out they're lying, they're getting booted back to Guatemala or whatever. So he should definitely, definitely not be getting special treatment. And I don't understand why he's getting this special the th treatment. And the thing about this, this uh, ambassador to London actually said this about two weeks ago. But the development here is that uh, the uh, uh, Heritage Foundation, the think tank that uh, is conducting this legal action, to find out whether or not he actually admitted to drug use. Yeah. If he didn't, if he didn't admit to drug use on his form, uh, and he told the truth in his book, that's a very serious offence. Mm. Lying on your visa application form. Uh, if he did tell the truth, I have taken drugs. Then why is he being allowed to stay in America? Exactly. He's damned if he does, and he's damned if he doesn't. Uh, what the Heritage Foundation are now saying is, uh, look, this. This ambassador over in London is going round saying that political decisions will be made about legal issues. So they've taken that into the case and said, this is not right. This government, uh, this Biden's administration is clearly biased here. So that's your other element to it. And uh, it, it is going the Heritage Foundation's way so far because uh, the judge has now uh, said to, to the Homeland Security Department, I want that visa and I want to see the form and then he will make... So he, the judge has now got it, uh, having uh, the uh, Department of Home Security having tried to keep him from getting it. He's now got it. He will make a decision soon as to uh, whether or not, uh, A, Harry gets kicked out of the country and, B, uh, whether or not it's transparent. But can't he just... It becomes transparent. Can, just can, Harry, can Harry claim as an effect... Can you run that past us again, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> can Harry claim... That's my joke. It was, honestly, can, you've can, got to get all your jokes from me. <laughs> Sorry. Can Harry just claim, well, I was just being an idiot to say it, pretending I took some, you know, this, it's a retrospective thing, isn't it? How would they have to, would they have to prove he'd taken drugs? No, he's, I, well, he's admitted it. Yes, but, but as yeah, lawyers... But he, could, he could then say, no, I just said it. I was, you're right, Ian. Lawyers have said lots of people write stuff in their books that isn't true. And obviously, we now know that quite a lot of stuff in Harry's book has proven to be well, he could say a little that. bit he could shaky say It's full of lies. This yeah. is just one of many. Yeah. <laughs> well, he could, he could, he could, he could say it was a work of fiction. He could, he could say do spare that. is a work of fiction. Do which America... It, which in many ways it was, I Do think. American judges realise that 99% of people lie on their forms then? If, if that form, I haven't been to America for a while, but do we stick the thing saying, I've never taken drugs? Yeah. Is that, yeah. Yes, you do. In, yeah. which, case, don't, don't, in don't. which case, 99% of people, or what, 90, 75% of people entering the US are lying. But people like Amy Winehouse and uh, Nigella Lawson a were stopped from going to the US yeah. because they, it's on record they've yeah. taken drugs. So Harry is on record he's taking drugs. He should not be allowed in there. Yeah. Oh, no, I completely agree with you. However, uh, it's uh, some bad news for Meghan Markle, too, Harry's missus. So, no. her half-brother, Thomas Jr., has been slammed for trolling the Duchess and peddling bizarre conspiracy theories about her in a series oh, of weird YouTube videos. Here he is. He's got pillows stuffed under his, his shirt there. He's wearing a terrible wig. Uh, and he calls himself Me Gain, a disparaging term he regularly uses for his half-sister. He goes on to spread the conspiracy theory that Meghan's mom, Doria, previously spent 10 years in jail, a story that's been repeatedly debunked, by the way. Um, and even British royal commentators, who are normally against Harry Meghan, have been coming out to say how disgusting this is. Uh, Jenny Bond has called on Google, which owns uh, YouTube uh, and has strict rules about offensive speech, to take responsibility and 
get I think it's disgusting off. because she treats her family so well. Oh, come on. Come she on. She deserves it. No, she deserves Kevin. It. What goes around comes around. How does she treat oh, her family? Suck it up, Megan. How does she treat them badly, exactly? Huh? How does she treat them badly? Well, it hasn't spoken to her dad now. Because he, he sold stories on her. Yeah? He was, he was cashing in so on her. So what? He was cashing in. She was she cashing in. Some sort in. of shark? What, sort of robot? Something <laughs> oh, wrong with God. her? Emotionally no. stunted? Kevin. What's wrong with her? Her family have What's cashed in her? on her and spread so dear dad, horrible dad's about her. dying. Yeah. No, Be Kevin. a decent person. <laughs> <laughs> now, moving on. <laughs> Shut up, JJ. Uh, from Washington to Whitehall now, where the Equalities Minister, Kemi Badenoch, has launched a furious broadside at the police, NHS and universities over gender ideology. Badenoch accused the public sector of failing to act impartially on the issue of trans rights, claiming cowardice of those in positions of influence was worse than the ravings of the militants. Her comments came in the wake of the CAS report, which found that children experiencing gender dysphoria had been let down by remarkably weak evidence on medical interventions like puberty blockers. Badenoch claims that nothing will change until industry leaders recapture impartiality and thoroughly investigate how senior leaders allowed organisations like Stonewall to direct policy. Meanwhile, NHS bosses in Stoke have uh, unfurled a banner celebrating 21 genders and sexualities. Uh, patients have slammed the stunt with one telling the son, people are waiting months and even years for treatment, but the NHS is more interested in woke pandering than taking care of patients. Uh, the trust backed the banner saying it showed support for the LGBTQ plus communities. That's great, isn't it? Uh, I mean, you know, Ken, Kenny Badenoch's right. I mean, what the CAS report was, the CAS review, was a reaction to the fact that a certain kind of wokery, a certain kind of allegedly liberal outlook had led to generations of kids being sent to the Tavistock clinic to be mutilated. Frankenstein's castle. You know, we've mutilated generations of kids on the back of wokery. That's what she's talking about. She's talking about the police in Rochdale who wouldn't uh, crack down on those grooming gangs because they were terrified of being branded racist. So she's absolutely right. The authorities, the police, uh, NHS, they've got to uh, stand up and be counted and stop pandering uh, to wokery and the fear mm. of but being also, branded racist. That, it's, it's exactly that. And if you look at Stonewall, who, you know, were a very credible organisation fighting for gay rights back in the day, nobody disputes that. Thank goodness they were there. I can't suggest or say this is Stonewall on this occasion, but organisations like Stonewall, who went to establishments like universities, the police, whatever, and essentially misrepresented what the law was, you know, telling them that this is the law. Mermaids as well, mermaids. And, really of course, a lot of these people thought, well, really, if they're, if they're saying it, they're yeah. a credible organisation, globally known, we must be wrong here. But when I see uh, the NHS people there standing up saying there's 21 genders, in a, I, I think they were in a hospital when they were saying yeah. that, yeah. there's literally, literally no, no biological evidence to support that position. It's simply an invented either a desire, something they want to believe. There is zero evidence yeah, to support it's, it's, it's 21 They're sexual, in a hospital. sexual personalities. That's, right. that's what okay, it is. If it's not a, gendered. But what's do you know that what got mean? to do with anybody? Gender. Why does anybody care what somebody's... No, 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 I, I agree. Fact. This I is agree. an obsession with other people's sex lives and their genitals, yeah. which is utterly bizarre. The Royal Stoke Hospital, which unveiled this flag, is one of the worst performing hospitals in the worst performing NHS trust in the country. They should be, as that patient said, they should be focusing on treating the patients, on dealing with the six million plus backlog, instead of which they were unveiling a flag which represents demi-romantics, asexuals, pansexuals, nitois, which is basically the same as non-binary, but non-binary is there absolutely ludicrous. Well, why There's, is that a flags, thing? Why is that of interest One of the flags anybody? is called straight ally, which is people like me that are straight, that support the LGBT community. So that's they a gender for you, isn't it? That's is that a gender? literally gen? these invented flags. These people what, are what's not... What's a demi-romantic, just... by the way? What is a demi-romantic? It's like people that can't decide and want to be friends with... So I don't know. They it's don't ludicrous. really know, do they? It's They've got like hundreds Bruce of these. Willis's they make wife. them all up. <laughs> They, 21 of them, they've they invented. Them up. Although it's interesting ally. that Kemi Badenoch today in the latest Conservative Home Poll has finally pit Penny, um, yeah, Badenoch's Good. finally pit Mordant and she's at Lisa number, Kemi what, number one At least Kemi Badenoch stands for something position. and is brave and talks 
openly yep. about this nonsense. Fair enough. Well, coming up, Ted Lasso star Hannah Waddingham scolds a photographer for telling her to show me a bit of leg on the <laughs> carpet. A night of drama at the Olivier's next on the talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <it's here. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Um, welcome back to the talk. Actress Hannah Waddingham was cheered on by onlookers as she confronted a photographer who told her to show a bit of leg <laughs> ahead of presenting the Olivier Awards on Sunday. Hero. The Ted Lasso star has divided opinion with her feisty response, with some fans demanding the misogynistic pap be named and shamed, with others branding Waddingham's behaviour as an overreaction. Now, I'm pretty... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's really hard to talk about this. <laughs> but I have been asked many times by the talk TV cameraman and often Harrison, our floor manager, to undo a little button here to show a little bit more chest. Um, so I understand what this feels like. So I'm with you. I'm with you, Hannah. It was an overreaction. It was an overreaction. Kev, you, you know what it's like being out there covering 
showbiz events I've and all the like. It. You've seen I it a thousand is, times. Yeah, I have. What's What's the deal? It does sound a bit odd. I think, ha- I think Hannah, some leg love. I think Hannah. <laughs> but she was wearing a leg yeah. showing outfit. I think Hannah Hannah Waddingham needs to uh, understand the environment she's in. I mean, okay, a photographer actually saying show us some leg is a bit uh, antediluvian, a bit dinosauric. <laughs> but that is the culture. Uh, well, the culture at these events is the uh, is the girls and the guys. Yeah. They come. Not, some, not necessarily the older ones, but the younger ones come uh, dressed to kill uh, in order to get noticed, in order to get photos taken of them, particularly the women. Uh, so, uh, yeah, OK, so you don't say show us a bit of leg, but a uh, lot of uh, ladies do go to these events deliberately showing a lot of legs so they can get on the front pages. And so, by the way, the so, dress yeah. does... Have yeah, a split so, up so, it you know, and show some leg. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a, it's not quite the place to say this. Uh, but, but I suppose uh, I don't her, think you should shout at women. But her, show us a her leg, point but you know what of I'm saying, saying you wouldn't say that to a man that is factually correct. Well, no, I mean, yes, oh yeah, he, he oh yeah, might yeah, have yeah, had yeah. some of that in the past. How, how, how come, how come female uh, television and radio presenters can discuss sexy men, but we can't discuss sexy yeah. women? Daisy, Daisy. But Even on the Today programme, they discuss, the women discuss sexy men, but the men can't discuss women. So, uh, you know, this, uh, you wouldn't do it to a man. You wouldn't, well, yeah, you would. You would. And the thing is, Daisy, men are not going to the, the events with a massive slit up their, up their, their, their dress, are they? <laughs> if, if Sam Smith was there and they were wearing a dress, I, I think actually as a showbiz reporter, some, him. some perhaps somebody would. He, some he, 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 about he. Sam Smith. Show us better legs. Him. What, Show Sam Smith? Him. 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 Like wearing a dress. Yeah, but he was wearing Sam, a dress, Sam Smith right? walks out with his buttocks hanging out, doesn't yeah. he? Their buttocks. Yeah. And Sam Smith would love it. <laughs> Go on, Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Show us some leg. Yeah, precisely. So I don't think it's fair to compare it to men and to men because we just dress differently, unfortunately. Yeah. It's the way it is. But, but we do sh- pick up you... on that stuff. You know, I mean, if you've got a... You know, a man's got a big beer belly out, people will point that out. If a woman oh, yeah. is wearing a massively revealing top with boobs in two different postcodes, then it will be picked up by the paps. I mean, that's just the reality. Can you just do that impression again? Because I'm convinced you were a pap in your former life. Go on. Show us a bit of leg. Oh, uh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Bit of leg. <laughs> and <laughs> now it's time for small talk. <laughs> Remember Blur? I do. Cool band from the Blur. 90s. So they were playing at Coachella, oh, and Damon Auburn got really annoyed with all of the groovy kids. They were literally about 15, 16 years old. They weren't singing along to any of the songs, and he was like, you idiots, you rubbish. Anyway, let him say it. Have a look. Have a look at this. to them, you'll never see us again, so you might as well effing sing. Um, I've seen Blur a few times. He seems to always be angry at the crowds whenever he performs, unless you've got an audience who are proper going for it. But these are American kids who don't They've really know They've never heard Blur. of Blur, exactly. surely. But this was a headlining act at Coachella. So you'd think, yeah, if you're going to book a band, the audience should know who you are. But yeah, it's a bunch of kids and they're Americans. Kevin, you know what I say about Americans. Uh, all of yeah. them. Uh, yeah, I know what you say. <laughs> you're, you're racist about Americans. Right? I'm racist yeah. about Americans. <laughs> Emma, what have you got? Um, All righty. Uh, <laughs> Heinz are launching a pink barbecue sauce. Uh, the sauciest collaboration of 2024 has officially dropped, with Heinz of Baked Beans fame teaming up with Mattel of Barbie fame to create, look at that, pink barbecue sauce. Wow. You, but it actually sounds quite nice. You'll have to act fast. There's only 5,000 bottles hitting the virtual shelves, with Tesco stocking it from Wednesday. The director of Taste Elevation at Heinz, yes, that's a real job, Mm -hmm. says the sauce gets its rosy hue from beetroot extract, which adds a dash of (laughs) colour to the smoky flavour. But beetroot is quite a good flavour in things. I quite like beetroot, but I really, really hate the barbecue sauce flavour, which seems to be on everything now. So I'm out if it's any sort of barbecue sauce. Have a look at that picture and try to work out the difference between pink and red. The sauce is red. Everything else there is pink. That's a very good point. <laughs> it's good not point. pink, is it? <laughs> Show us your ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> it's just but ketchup. But if, it, if it's made of beetroot, it will be pink. If it's made yeah, but it, look, it's not though. Should it? we be really? There's a synergy between you know uh, kids, young kids, which presumably that's aimed at, and 
you know, food that isn't necessarily good for you. You're right. What's happened to that argument? Yeah. yeah. And why have you suddenly got so boring and no, sensible? Don't, don't get me wrong. It's always been boring. It's always been boring. I don't, I don't, I don't, been I don't boring. give a toss. <laughs> I'm just intrigued I think somebody else does. Sad that. Sadiq Khan wouldn't allow that to be advertised on the... I, mean, I reckon yeah. that's why they put the that's beetroot true. in there to make Maybe. it to make it healthier. Healthy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right, we are moving on to nighties. Nighties. Oh. Yep, as in night dresses, not just any nighty. This is an M and S night dress, and there it is. So that is a nighty, not a dress, but it is apparently going to become one of summer's hottest it dresses because it's been uh, launched by. Rosie Huntington Whiteley, do you remember her? Supermodel. Yeah. So this Very slinky sleeveless number is predicted to sell out this summer, and people are already wearing it out to restaurants and stuff. Uh, so you'll remember Rosie Huntington Whiteley brought the push-up bra to the high street retailer. Of course, she's we got a, that. She's got a, a range. Hello, boys. It's yeah. good story, isn't it? <laughs> <She's> got... <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, is it a nighty or is it a dress? <laughs> it's a nighty that we're all, you two included, you three included, going to wear out as a dress. So what? It's so the means you can thing. go out and then not when you get home you just go to bed. Just take your pants off and go to bed. Yeah. What about this? It might cause, <laughs> it could cause one of these problems. <laughs> Solicitors at an elite family law firm made a computer error that resulted in the wrong couple being divorced. The couple referred to a Mr. and Mrs. Williams and instructed solicitors at the firm, headed by Aisha Vardag who styles herself as the UK's diva of divorce, whatever that means. When asked to correct the mistake, the judge refused, stating there's a strong public policy interest in respecting the certainty and finality that flows from a divor final divorce order. It's all so a couple of being divorced who never asked to get divorced. Yeah. Or did so, they? Is it cunning ploy from one bar? Maybe you think diva of divorce is yeah, advertising. Yeah, yeah. Or may, ma a maybe fame, one half a famous is bribed law firm. as judge. That's horrific. That's like uh, taking out the one... Well, diva of divorce is a famous law firm. Uh, the, the woman. Oh, right. Aisha Vardai. Mm. Oh, yeah, I've heard of her. Yeah, she's like the divorced she's person like the, to the, the stars. The Not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> Mm. Is that a is that just fake news I've but, just read? But out they though? wouldn't undo the divorce, so these won't. I want people... the show us your papers. I want to see the details. <laughs> Kev, what have you got? Uh, here we go. You've all heard of influencers, but now get ready to meet Britain's first binfluencer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he might be a few million followers away from the usual social media sensations, but Andy is adamant his hobby isn't rubbish. Rating the trash receptacles around his hometown of Coggleton in Cheshire. Uh, obviously not much to do there. Uh, <laughs> Andy scores them, these bins, on their personality, placement, pristineness, performance and popularity. A lot of P's in there. How do you rate a bin on its personality? It's got a little smiley face. Yeah, little, happy little thing, isn't it? You know, <laughs> always singing, you know, always whistling, do you really think happy. It's fair to say that Andy's not well. He's yeah. not a well man. You know what man. we should do? Yeah, we I should think Andy him needs to get a life. In the, in bin. the bin. In the bin. In the bin. That's all we've got time for on the talk. Thank you to Emma Wolf, Ian Collins, JJ Anisabi, Kevin O'Sullivan, and thank you for watching. Bye bye. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. 
they might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Whoa, missing. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the